So I've been thinking on general tactics that we need to work on in general. So for me, it's really about launching submissions from bottom. I'm not creating any submission threat. So I'm not able to really scare you into getting away from me. And I usually get my back taken. Also, I need to really work on passing your guard. Uh, I'm usually capitalizing on a mistake and I haven't really been able to impose any sort of body lock pass or any sort of real passing strategy. And that's been not great for me because the only way I've been able to pass your guard is if I'm able to make you make a mistake. And that's not a reliable way of doing it. Yeah. And so for you, pretty obvious, you uh, have uh, need to work on takedown offense, but your takedown defense is so good that that may not be an issue. But yeah, obviously we've talked about the takedown offense. And the one thing that I noticed is finishing from the back. So one thing that I'm doing a lot is I'm once you've taken my back, I'm turtling and I'm getting away from you. And I think if you take a, a couple of good strategies, so a good couple of good strategies you did today were that really heavy half Nelson on the back of my neck and around my shoulder. I think that's going to be one of your major strategies to keep me in that position. And it held me in position a couple of times today. And also being more aggressive in the chokes. So there are some gaps that I'm giving you and I'm not being completely defensively responsible. So here's that inversion into the leg lock into the toe hold and uh, really nice work. And this is what I'm talking about, about uh, these submissions from bottom. I have some leg locks, but I really don't have that many arm bars or triangles from bottom. So this is a really good example of what I was talking about. So, so the research I'll be doing will be on takedowns for you, back attacks for you, passing for me, and submissions from bottom for me. So just look out for the adjustments that I'll be working on the next few weeks for those skills. Obviously, you'll be working on the takedowns and back attacks uh, on the way that I move. So you'll just see me working those positions a little bit better. So this is the, an example of that back attack that I'm talking about. You're able to get to this position, but you don't really finish because I'm able to turtle and get to my knees and get up. So just some good, better strategies of dealing with this, I think will be good, but it's tough. I'm bigger than you, a little bit stronger, so I'm able to get into this position. But this is that pass that I was talking about, that high leg, really dexterous pass. That was sick, really sick move. I think this is a, an example of really high level movement in this position from both me and you. You're doing such a good job of pinning me, but that also means that there aren't that many submission opportunities. So I'm just waiting until I can get an arm free. And then if I clasp my arms together, it's much more difficult to attack any submissions. And then I'm looking to insert frames maybe regard, but then once you're in this north-south position, I go for a turtle escape. I'm trying to get onto my hands and knees. But you're doing a really good job avoiding my legs, avoiding any sort of regard, and yeah, I have to go away from you. So the answer to the Degasthani handcuff is this Peterson roll. The counter to this is swinging your legs over and kind of, you almost got it, but you just got to swing that leg over high and then attack the back. But this was, a, you were already in a good position with this half Nelson anyway, and then you took my back. The only thing that got me out here was a little cheeky footlock that I don't think would have caused a lot of damage, just a little bit of pain. But uh, yeah, that was the only way I got out. And that's a weird strategy I have is attacking submissions from these bad positions. So I would have gone for the arm bar if I was higher up on your body too, right?
that was just a really common sequence you get into in this type of guard. And then you pass this leg over into the leg drag. And so I see the opportunity and take it. If I had been a little bit faster, I might have been able to finish this calf slicer. And I think I could have taken you over to your side, like swept you to your side. But you did a really good job planting that foot and keeping the leg straight. That's the key to these calf slicers is if your leg is straight, there's no submission. There needs to be a bend in the leg and then right there into the pass. So I guess that was one of, you could argue that's a submission from bottom, but the defense is so easy that I should be able to chain attacks from there. So that calf slicer is okay, but it just locks me into place. You know, it doesn't let me move or off balance you. It just locks me to your leg. And if you defend like that, it's impossible to stop. And this is the reason I love half guard is because it's that dilemma is if you're a little bit too far forward and I can get control of your elbow across my body, I'm attacking your back every time. So a really good regard after that to abandon position. But yeah, it's my, one of my favorite things to do from half guard. So one thing I'm doing is I'm sitting back on leg locks and seeing what you do in terms of leg pummeling and try and get to a better passing position with my legs as I step forward again. So that's going to be a tactic of mine to try and get my legs entangled into an advantageous passing position before sitting back up into a passing position. Also, if I sit back up quickly, I can engage body locks while uh, you're still attacking my feet. First dog bar sequence of the day. I will be working on this a lot. I think I can develop a smooth, slow, very pressured way of finishing this. I did feel a lot of control over the knee, maybe more of a toe hold heel hook situation like you said. Yeah, don't try and barambolo the barambolo master, right? And I thought I could get up into a good spot, but you spin in the perfect direction, put pressure on the outside of the leg, and then passed beautifully, just a great pass. Yeah, right here in my escape, there's a moment where it can completely spin, continue spinning until you're parallel with my body and then you grab the back of my body lock. Just a quick little single leg there. That was 
the closest takedown of the day in terms of if you could call it to take down but again i don't call that clean that's not a clean takedown not from the feet so no clean takedowns for today so this was the mistake that i was able to punish all the way was that head position into that front headlock i got a tight grip here was looking for the guillotine and then once i didn't feel the guillotine was on i tried to advance position to side control and then you get it back, but you get this back with this crazy arm movement here where you trap my arm with your legs. Just beautiful work. But you're kind of already in a bad position in terms of a passing position. So once I keep my arm safe and I pop my head up to the side, I know I can take you to your back. So you could kind of argue that this is uh, just a wrestling sequence. yeah. So the reason why I'm able to finish is that I have control of your leg the whole time. And then I have a body lock with control of your leg. So even though it seemed like that was kind of more jujitsu, that was wrestling when also I cheat in wrestling. Yeah? So as soon as you had both my shoulders to the ground, I would have lost in wrestling. But with that body lock and that leg ride, I'm able to spin and get to my my hips facing the ground. And so one thing that you should notice is that a lot of the times my escapes is just turning my hips to face the ground and then getting my knees underneath me. So that's one thing that you can use in teaching people how to escape from you is just try to get your hips facing the ground away from you. I've been hitting this choke a lot. I'm not sure what it's called. So I think I'm just gonna call it the in arm triangle where your arm is pinched underneath my chest and I'm pulling on your neck, the in arm triangle. And then honestly, the really the prettiest jujitsu of the day was this whole sequence. I thought I'd be able to wrestle from here, but such good pressure into the spinning omoplata and the triangle. Just absolutely beautiful. Great work this week. I'll see you next week.